photography buffs out there watching. So when Lloyd told us he'd be getting hands-on with Lightroom 3 for a review, we asked him to come on and talk about the difference between photo management software and photo editors and why you might want to be running something like Lightroom or Aperture if you manage a big old photo collection. Lloyd, welcome back to the show, man. Hey, good to see you. You, uh, is your, your kit's missing. Hopefully it wasn't stolen. Nope, you, it's right behind you. You are, are a completely... And since it seems to be the word of the month for me, I'm going to say an unhinged photography enthusiast. Two kids. I, is it safe for me to unzip this? You can unzip it if you don't tip it over. <laughs> if I don't throw it over the side of this. Otherwise, but, you owe me a lot of money. Yeah, we're going to be really gentle with this because your camera setup is worth a lot more than my truck. How many, how many photos do you think you have stashed around in various drives at home? I have several hundred gigabytes worth of raw photos. Several hundred gigabytes. Right. So not, well. I have a two terabyte drive that's about one third full with just photographs. That's a lot of photographs. And that's assuming, uh, do you keep all of your photographs or do you throw any away? I tend to keep them, yeah. I, partly because it's just too much work to filter through them. <laughs> so I just get bigger drives every time they come out. So Lightroom isn't Photoshop. It's like a compliment to Photoshop. Yeah, it's, it is, what Lightroom is, is it's, think of it as a photo editor just for photography. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do text. You can't, you know, do all the stuff you would do with Photoshop, the standard image, you can't draw lines on it. All the, it's just for developing and printing photographs. Think of it as a photo studio for your, your PC, is essentially what it is. And Aperture is the same way. It's just a photo management and photo uh, specifically, specifically for photographers. Mm -hmm. and photographers. So when you look at Lightroom, do you think of it as like something that makes it easier to sort of delve through your photo collection, or is it primarily just doing the best job possible at, at, at getting your photos off the hard drive and into the physical world? It's a little of both. It's a, it, it's a what's called a workflow application as well as an editor. So it manages your workflow. Uh, it goes through the steps of the library steps, you know, where you bring in your stuff from your camera, uh, sort it, manage it put it into the folders you want to put it into, that kind of stuff. Then it's got the develop part, which is just what it sounds like, where you make the changes and tweaks to your pictures. Uh, you can do slideshows. You can output to printers. It has a really robust printing part, too. It's made to print on those big format printers and stuff. I like that thought. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about the develop panel. What's going on there? Well, the develop panel is pretty cool. It's where you do a lot of your main work. And you can do the basic stuff, like remove red eye correction, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you can do things like adjust white balance and all that stuff. The coolest part of it, in terms of Lightroom 3, what they added, two things. Noise reduction. Ooh. Noise reduction. It had in, in earlier versions of Lightroom, but it sucked. <laughs> Turn your fat. Right. I mean, basically, it, was, it wasn't noise reduction so much as it was sort of posterization. Right. Like, for example, <laughs> yes, right. I would shoot, and I shoot a lot of high ISO pictures. Right. I shoot ISO 3200 a lot because I'm shooting indoor sports and stuff like that. Hence your propensity for carrying Nikon cameras and glass around. That's right. And so the, lens, uh, the uh, noise reduction now works pretty well. Mm -hmm. It allows you to pretty significantly tweak uh, in, in a number of different ways. For one thing, you can do things like... Um, not just, let's say, one of the things about noise reduction, you talk about the posterization, it removes detail, right? right. You, you decrease the noise. So it allows you to sort of tweak the detail. It has a detail slider. It allows you to kind of take that compromise fit. So you can so have, doesn't everyone love the film grain kind right. of effect? Well, there's <laughs> film grain and there's, you know, the color noise, which right. is really ugly. So, so basically, does it, so real-time preview allows you to kind of That's select right. things on the fly before yep. you can And remember, the other thing about Lightroom is unlike Photoshop, it's non-destructive. Nice. So as you're making your changes, that's saving it off in an XML file, not actually changing the image. That's a big deal, because there's nothing worse than finding out, like, like somebody's been messing around with your computer and, like, your right. favorite picture of Yada. That's right. Turned into your favorite picture of Yada with lots of effects by somebody with maybe that's questionable right. taste. Yep. Not that I'm bitter about an ex-roommate <laughs> um, who shall be stopped. But what, what's going on in terms of... Uh, uh, do they add lens correction? Is that new also? Well, they had lens correction before. They've had a lot of manual tweaks to the lens correction, so you can do uh, a lot of what's called transforms now. Like I, when I was in Europe, I shot a bunch of pictures of doorways because right. they have like cool doorways in Venice. Great stuff like doorways. That. But you know, I would I would just be shooting them on the fly, so they'd be kind of skewed one way, and I wouldn't be perfectly you know 90 degrees to the door. You can actually go in and start moving that around and make it look like it's perpendicular. So you basically you don't have to be particularly meticulous about your shot. You could you could fix it right. in post. Yes, to a certain <laughs> extent. Now if I'm standing you know 30 degrees from the door and I try, you're going to get distortion when you try to do that much correction. But you can do like a few degrees of correction and it looks pretty real. That's pretty amazing actually when you kids you, you don't expect it, you know okay they're going to shift the pixels but it actually right. looks fantastic. It looks really good. Is it shifting the shadows or what's it actually doing? It does a lot. It does a lot of stuff. I mean it's 
not just doing one thing. It's not just moving the thing around. It's it's changing all. It's basically messing around with the whole perspective of the image. That's pretty crazy. Now, you yeah. mentioned there were, there were two big changes that made it particularly Lightroom three particularly interesting. One was the fact that the noise reduction That's actually right. works. Was the was the the lens correction the other one? The or? lens correction is one of the other ones. Um, it, it's one of the ones I've been playing with a lot actually, and have most, the most fun with. Anything in time there in terms of like the that it does in terms of managing your library that makes it easier? Can you like batch? You know, edit or yeah, you can. Batch just, it's it's, it's a little better at doing things like uh, tell, batch copying and batch renaming and stuff like that. The real, the other addition that I like is a lot of the output stuff has been proved. There's a lot new, of new templates for printing, so you can do all kinds of really wacky collages and stuff like that. Or just if you just want to do um, a lot of thumbnails and things like that to look at pictures on, on a printer, what it would look like on a printer, then you can do that too. What's Lightroom running these days? I think the retail is three hundred dollars. You can find it a lot cheaper than that online. <laughs> Would you consider, like, I'm, I'm laughing now because it's particularly funny, I'm just like, you know, just when you thought you'd be able to get an amazing camera for under 300 you... Right. <laughs> now, is... the people who have Photoshop, mm -hmm. often should I get Lightroom too? And the short answer is only if you need sort of the special workflow stuff and mm -hmm. library management, because a lot of what's in what's called camera raw in Photoshop is what Lightroom does. Oh, really? Uh, just a more, more sophisticated and friendly user interface. That's an interesting thought. In terms of workflow management, is that something you find yourself using, or is that more like more I'm more. a professional photographer and I shoot like a million pictures a week? I, I'm doing it more and more. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm finding it, it previously I would use something called Bridge, which was also an Adobe app, but this is a lot more flexible and sophisticated than Bridge for that kind of stuff. What kind of stuff are you doing with it mostly? Uh, in terms of photo management? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just the sort of managing the library stuff. Okay. So it's the, the fact that it automatically date sorts and stuff like that and, re, and, and names folders for you so you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. That's actually really convenient. Mm -hmm. Flickr, Picasso, would they be considered sort of low-end versions of, of something like this? Well, Picasso, of course, is a standalone app. Flickr is sure. online. Uh, Lightroom actually integrates with Flickr, mm -hmm. so you can actually publish to Flickr and stuff like that automatically. Uh, but Flickr is not really a photo management. I mean, it is right. sort of, but Picasso is probably a little better because you have the, it, the integration between the application and, and, and the Picasso website. But now with, with Lightroom, you can do that with Flickr as well. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been wondering what these photo management tools are all about, I hope Mr. Lloyd answered that question for you. We'll probably have you back on in a few weeks. Okay. What's the best place to find the latest in Lloyd online? Uh, Maximum PC, uh, PC World, ImprobableInsights.com, and you can always find me on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Lloyd Case. People, follow him if you're not. There's good, good stuff coming from this man. <laughs>